Good morning, my name is Maureen Chung. Welcome to Daily Devotional of September the 9th. The Bible passage is 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1 to 4, 9 to 10, 15 to 18, and then 24 to 25. The title is The Sin of Pride. Again, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and he cited David against them, saying, Go and take a census of Israel and Judah. So the king said to Joab and the army commanders with him, Go through the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and enroll the fighting men so that I may know how many there are. But Joab replied to the king, May the Lord your God multiply the troops a hundred times over and may the eyes of my lord the king see it. But why does my lord the king want to do such a thing? The king's word, however, overruled Joab and the army commanders, so they left the presence of the king to enroll the fighting men of Israel. Verse 9, Joab reported the number of the fighting men to the king. In Israel, there were 800,000 able-bodied men who could handle a sword, and in Judah, 500,000. David was conscience-stricken after he had counted the fighting men, and he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I've done. Now, Lord, I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. Verse 15. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel from that morning until the end of the time designated and 70,000 of the people from Dan to Beersheba died. When the angel stretched out his hand to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord relented concerning the disaster and said to the angel who was afflicting the people, Enough! Withdraw your hand! The angel of the Lord was then at the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. Then When David saw the angel who was striking down the people, he said to the Lord, I have sinned. I, the shepherd, have done wrong. These are but sheep. What have they done? Let your hand fall on me and my family. On that day, Gad went to David and said to him, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite. Verse 24, but the king replied to Aaron, No, I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen and paid 50 shekels of silver for them. David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord answered his prayer in behalf of the land, and the plague on Israel was stopped. Now we have come to the last chapter of Second Samuel, in which the last of David's noticeable sins is recorded. The passage does not tell us why the anger of the Lord burnt against Israel. Perhaps the widespread support for the rebellion of Absalom against David was an assault on God's anointed king, thus arousing God's anger. But God incited David against them by taking a census of David's fighting men. An alternative reading is available in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. Was it God who incited David, or was it Satan who incited David? As we can see in the story of of Job, Satan could have stirred up trouble if God had not permitted it to happen. Ultimately, God is in control. But David was still responsible for letting the census take place because he was curious to know how many fighting men he had in his country. This was a time of peace. Perhaps deep down, David wanted to take pride in the strength of his army. He could then rely on himself rather than on God. His commander Joab knew that taking a census was unnecessary, but David overruled Joab in this matter. 
I confess that once I was tempted to count how many people I had helped to lead to Christ through the young people's ministry at church. In the church office was a membership role, listing names and dates of baptism and dates of membership transfer. But thanks to God's mercy, this thought was fleeting. I didn't do the counting. But I knew that deep down I was tempted to steal God's glory by claiming his work as my own. This episode has become a warning sign to me from this point on. I always remember this as God's mercy to me. In David's case, the census came back. In Israel, there were 800,000 fighting men, and in Judah, there were 500,000. Immediately after the numbers came in, David was conscience-stricken. David prayed, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. Now, Lord, I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. Verse 10. Therefore, the Lord sent a plague for three days in the land, resulting in the deaths of 70,000 men. However, when the angel of death approached Jerusalem, the Lord was grieved and he called out, Enough! Withdraw your hand. God takes no pleasure in death. God delights in life. The angel of the Lord was then at the threshing floor of Arona, the Jebusite. Verse 16. David grieved over the deaths that he caused by his sin. He'd rather have received the punishment along with his family. But it was too late. As king, he represented the people before God. He sinned, but they also sinned. The Lord's anger burned against Israel. It says in verse 1, Together, David and Israel received God's judgment. However, God provided a way of atonement. God sent his prophet Gad to instruct David to build an altar of sacrifice to the Lord right on the threshing floor of Aaron the Jebusite. That is in verse 18. David insisted on paying for the threshing floor and the oxen. He built an altar and sacrificed offerings to the Lord. The Lord answered the prayer and stopped the plague. The altar on the threshing floor is on Mount Moriah at the location of the temple yet to be built. It is the altar of the atonement of sins. It foreshadows the sacrifice of Christ as our Redeemer. King David sinned, but his descendant, the Messiah Jesus, never sinned. He died on the cross to set us free from the curse of sin and death. Thus, the threshing floor of Arona, the Jebusite, points to the redemptive work of Christ Jesus. You can refer to daily devotional on June the 26th. What have I learned? The man after God's own heart, David, sinned again. Although this was uncharacteristic of him to be prideful, he nonetheless fell into temptation. Success can lead to self-glorification. When we are used to success, we can easily forget to depend on God and to honor him for our good fortune. What have I claimed to be my own when it is a gift from God? Material things, intangible things, spiritual gifts, spiritual insight and growth to maturity, family and children. We are morally bankrupt and void of all righteousness. We have nothing to boast of except the cross of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we need the altar of sacrifice on which the Lamb of God was slain. Otherwise, we cannot survive the plague of sin and death. God is merciful. He provides a way out. He grieves for us. We can only count on him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray with the words of wisdom from Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7 to 9. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. 
Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Let me boast only in your cross. My Lord, thank you for saving me from my wretched sin of pride and self-sufficiency. Please do not let me be a stumbling block to others. Let me proclaim your name in word and deed. May all honor and praise be yours forevermore. In Christ's name I ask. Amen. Thank you for joining me and may God bless you all. See you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.